Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, and hello to all you um, others out there. Hi. If you have what is known as the authorized version of the scriptures, please, um, please go ahead and get the authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly called the King James Version, to the book of Ezekiel. Look in the front of the scriptures if you do not know where Ezekiel is. It's important that you go uh, with me in the scriptures and read this along with me. Okay? We're going to begin in Ezekiel chapter 6, but then we're going to bleed over into Ezekiel chapter 7. But I want to bring to something to your attention. Um, I have done a video before the Lord, excuse me. <laughs> the Lord had um, done a video through me um, about the upcoming famine, uh, the food shortage that is going to be produced here in America. And also, I believe, across the world as well. But specifically here in America, um, there is coming a food shortage, a food famine. Have you noticed in grocery stores, certain items are not just being restocked right now? Oh, whoa. No, Brad, you're being a conspiracy theorist. Uh, no, uh, it's, I prefer the term conspiracy factualist. We've noticed it around here. Certain items that were once there are no longer being... Um, refilled, stuff like that. Why is that? Well, because they're going to bring a famine. I've addressed this in another video. I will put it in the link um, of the description box of this video on both of them. Okay. So, um, and this is a scheme of the Jesuit order. To do what? To break the will of the American people. Okay. Now, this is happening elsewhere, but I'm an American, so I'm speaking uh, of America, okay? Get the people starving. Food shortages. You know, you go to the grocery store and then you can't get your favorite food or whatever, and they have these rolling food shortages and whatnot, okay? Yeah, yeah. Get people starving. Get them as scared by the psychological operation known as the Poison Crown Operation, which is being um, executed by the Jesuit order. Okay? Get them hungry, get them afraid. That'll get them angry. So you have a three, you have a recipe for disaster coming here to America. And right now too, anger. <laughs> anger at uh, Smoking Joe. The front man to President Kamala Harris. Remember, the Jesuit order has been allowed by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has been allowed to run rampant right now. Okay? They are being allowed to do so. And Smoking Joe, more so President Harris, that they have been placed here for judgment upon America. Allowed of God to do so. Okay, and you look at what Smoking Joe has done with the debacle in Afghanistan. Okay, is he going to go somewhere? I don't know, but um, boy, it sure does seem like it. Um, and it would not be a shock or surprise at all onto me if uh, Smoking Joe does what's best for our country here and steps down and in officially comes President Kamala Harris. With the vice president being Nancy Pelosi. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, all you Democommies, ain't you happy? Oh, hey, 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 hey. Not that if uh, a Republican or a Repulsican um, was put in there like, you know, Trump, who will be making a Napoleonic return. You watch. Um, it's it doesn't matter. It's the Hegelian principle: argument, counter-argument, and result. 
They control both sides, both the Democommies and the Republicans, okay? The Jesuits control America. And the destruction of this nation is coming quite rapidly, quite rapidly. And food shortage, a famine, is slighted for this nation. You watch. It's already beginning. See, they're doing it little by little. Just like they're mandating uh, the steal of the Jesuit poniard upon people in order to work. What is it again? No jab, no job, which they're doing uh, onto the poor people in Australia. And uh, there is a beloved brother of mine, an Australian, uh, who even himself says, my nation is wicked. Look at America. We're wicked. We're going to be going over a PDF, which I'm going to link in the description box of this video as well, okay? Going to be looking at a PDF that a dearly, dearly beloved sister sent on to me. Uh, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, a means of how, number one, they're going to bring about the food shortage, and number two, how they're going to pass it off, meaning they got a scapegoat, cyber people cyber hackers or stuff like that when in truth it's the Jesuits withholding these things uh, apparently uh, so, and you people look this up on your own time uh, Bill Gates of hell is buying up uh, property farm uh, farms here in America also apparently the Chinese government is also buying up farms here in America as well famine is coming people have you not noticed in your grocery stores here, my American countrymen? Why is this? God's judgment. God's judgment. But see, now here, here's another thing that you people need to really understand. Okay, I'm not a Christian. I'm of the Church of the Living God, or Church of uh, Church of God. Okay. The lost world labels us, the Church of the Living God, as Christians. We don't call ourselves that, okay? One of the problems that a lot of you people out there, and I'm talking on to you lost people, okay, is you hear these Christians in, in, in their church buildings, these uh, love them into the kingdom Christians. You have these people come to you saying, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And when you look into the scriptures, look um, for the word loves in the scripture. Go ahead. Never once is it ever mentioned with God, present tense, loving a lost sinner. God's love was manifested one time at one place. That's called Calvary. Before we get into Ezekiel, let's touch on this. Turn now, I, I know I said to go to Ezekiel, but the Lord is the one who is, um, this is of the Lord, <laughs> not of me, okay? Go to John, John in the New Testament, John chapter 3, one of the more familiar verses known unto lost people besides, judge not that ye be not judged. <laughs> Uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. That's the most commonly known uh, scripture verse even on to lost people. Because what do they say? Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I've spoken on that before myself, okay, in other videos. I'm not going to get off on that. Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Okay? This is not the gospel, by the way. This is not the gospel. You have to rightly divide. You have to study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The whole book's for you. The whole book is not written to you. Okay? That's being called being dispensational. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Uh, when Jesus said this in John chapter 3, number one, it was before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, he was speaking unto who? Nicodemus, a Jew. But there is general truth here, yes. 
but this is not the gospel. This is not the gospel. These these Christians in these church buildings, you know, these uh, uh, look like the world to win the world Christians, they say this is the gospel. It's not the gospel. Because, let's read it. John chapter 3, verse 16, on to verse 21. Follow me along, please. John chapter 3, verse 16, on to verse 21. For God so loved, past tense, loved. Loved is past tense there. For God so loved the world that he gave, past tense, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So right there, you got these Christians who will tell you that's the gospel. And they say, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. God's not angry at you. God loves you. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. See, these Christians, um, especially with verse 17, they want you to believe that number one, Jesus is uh, a one part, the second part of a satanic three-person trinity. A person, by the way, is a spirit, soul, and body. You and I, whether you want to believe this or not, we're made in uh, God's image. What does that mean? We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Do you understand? Okay. Never mind looking in your YouTube search thing. Okay. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay. We're made in the image of God. But see, these Christians will come and say that for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And in verse 16 it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, the devils also believe, and they tremble. James chapter 2, verse 18 or 19. Okay? The devils also believe, tremble. Okay? This is a different dispensation, still under the law. But see, the, the Christian will come to verse 17 and say to you, God loves you. He's not mad at you. You see, this is the gospel. He he loves you, and he gave himself for you. He's he he's he's not mad at you. He's not going to judge you. Okay, he loves you unconditionally. Unconditionally. Guess what, dear friend? Guess what? Guess what? That's a lie. Oh, yeah. Now, 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 dear friend, think about this, okay? What, and for those of us in the church of the living God as well, <laughs> how many times <laughs> have you encountered the, well, uh, how could a loving God send someone to hell? I cannot count on ten brethren's hands and feet, you know, fingers and toes, how many times I myself personally have encountered that? Why, why do lost people have that? Why do they say things like that? Because you have Christians telling these people God loves you. And then when they find out that there's a place called hell and that those who are not saved are going to hell, then the lost person, think about it, logically says, okay, you're telling me God loves me unconditionally. But yet, there's a hell where he's going to send you forever to burn forever and ever and ever. But he loves you. 
It doesn't make sense, does it? Does it? See, the God loves you stems from one place. Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, with something, now hold on, hold on. It stems from, it stems from this, Vatican, uh, Vatican Council II. Vatican Council II is where the Jesuit order, the Jesuits were the ones who created this, okay? Uh, Vatican Council II is where the Jesuit order came up with their doctrine of ecumenicalism. That the Christians out there are separated brethren from the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? And hence, from the ecumenical bringing all denominations under the headship of Rome in the guise of love, because of this, this is what, this is what birthed the ecumenical movement. Okay? And then you run, and then you, lost person, you run into one of these worldly Christians who tell you God loves you. That's a teaching of Catholicism from Vatican II. The Jesuits were responsible for this. The Jesuits are the enemies of all mankind. They're your enemy, whether you know it or not. Okay? Um, God does not love you unconditionally. God's love was manifested one time at Calvary. If you don't meet, if you don't meet the Lord there, God's love is not for you. Okay? Because before we continue in John chapter 3, let's look at verses 14 and 15 in John chapter 3. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Lifted up. Put on a cross. Die. Bury. And rise again the third day according to the scriptures. And the shed blood on the cross is the atonement for your sin. Not the flesh that the Catholic believes in. You know the little round wafer God cookie of theirs, okay? Which they worship. They worship the flesh. The flesh of the Eucharist, okay? Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for your sin. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay? But see, God has a requirement for him saving you. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to be contrite because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? It's your fault that he went to the cross. Oh, <gasps> Yeah, it's my fault too. Yeah. It's your fault. He died because of what you did. And if you don't go to the cross on his terms, broken and contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you will call upon the name of the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is going to make you aware that you're going to hell and you justly deserve it. There are conditions that will bring God's wrath upon you. If you don't go to God via his terms, God's love is not for you. And these Christians tell you God loves you. And then when you, lost person, get, you know, have a little sense in your head, it's like, well, wait a minute. Why would a loving God who loves me so much put me in hell? See, see, that's, that's ecumenicalism. That's Jesuit. That's what these, you know, God loves you. Uh, the love of God. Everybody preach the love of God. God, we're not judging people. We're not judging you. Look, we're Christians and we're not judging you. Uh, brethren, Church of the Living God, is it any wonder why the lost people don't like Christians? Guess what? I don't like Christians either. <laughs> now let's continue in John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21 now. He that believeth on him is not condemned. On him versus in him mm. but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God 
And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men, those of the world, who are not saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Another symptom of this disease, known as modern Christianity, uh, is the Jesuitical easy, easy believism, that you save yourself by just believing the facts. Just believe. You save yourself by your own belief. When the scriptures teach us by grace, through faith, not that you save yourself by your own belief. Um, that, dear friend, is a damnable heresy. Because, see, the scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ is the door. And you've got to go through the door in order for him to save you. Okay? And the requirement for going through that door is brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. The easy believism heretic devil, okay, what they do is just believe. You just make a mental decision in your head, and then all of a sudden, poop, you're saved. They preach against brokenness, repenting of your self-righteousness. They call that a work. They preach against godly sorrow. Okay? They like to twist that and say godly, only saved people can have godly sorrow. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. See, only a devil would say, uh, say something like that. And you know what they really hate? They hate calling upon the name of the Lord. They say that's work. See, because when someone out of the fear of the Lord calls upon the name of the Lord, you the lesser are calling upon the greater. But see, every single one of these people who are easy believism devils, they are their own gods. They are not humbled. They have not been broken of their self-righteousness because you will save yourself by your own belief. Ain't that right, Frankie boy, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you save yourself by your own belief. Therefore, their pride compasseth them about like a chain wrapped around their neck. And they're trying to take as many of you lost people to hell as they can. That's the goal. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand why lost people hate Christians. I don't like them either. Because that which is Christian today is not of the church of the living God. And verse 20 here shows very well what the easy believism devil is. Uh, the scriptures in John chapter 10 says, if anyone goes up another way besides the door, they are a thief and a robber people. The people out there, these devils who say you're saved by you just believing, they're thieves and robbers. And when we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, and you left behind, hopefully some of you will wake up to that before it's too late. Okay? Let's read verse 20 again. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And these Christians hate the light. And you got to remember too, the scriptures tell us that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel that his ministers are transformed into ministers of righteousness. Counterfeit. Counterfeit light. Okay? And you got to remember, in Colossians chapter 3, there are several places that mention this, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to go to Colossians. Um, see, what these Christians aren't telling you, dear friend, is in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 unto verse 7. 
Okay? Now, Colossians chapter 3 is in the Pauline epistles, which is doctrine specifically for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Meaning that us Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Hebrew, in the tree of the Jew. Okay? We were grafted in to make them jealous. Okay? The Jews are the enemy of the Gospels for our sake. We have not replaced them. We are supposed to make them jealous. And you think some crazy Christian with God loves you and just believe? Um, think that makes a Jew jealous? I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, I kind of know so. Anyway, um, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. He's speaking to the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay? Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Things above, where our Lord is, waiting to come back at his second coming after he calls us up. Okay? We are not to be having our minds fixated on things of the earth. Like these Christians want you to when they tell you it's the Christian thing to do to roll up your sleeve and take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? And on to that again. See that? See that? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. For the, to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah. That is the Christian thing to do. No one of the Church of the Living God would ever tell you to do so. If they do, you're a liar. You're not saved. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? But we are supposed to set our mind on heavenly things where our Lord is and not be fixated on things of this earth, which the Christian wants you to do. What the easy believism devil wants you to do, to be comfortable in your sin. Okay? Verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Speaking on to save people. You're, you're lost, this does not apply to you. Okay? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore. Mortify means to put down, to kill. Okay? To put down. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Okay? Uh, you perverts, that's not talking about a specific thing. Your members, your arms, your hands, your feet, your legs, your head, that kind of stuff, okay? Your body, okay? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All of that is idolatry. Because what's its... What in verse 5 there is the focus, the primary focus of fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry? What is the focus? Is it on things of the heaven? No. What, did it, what is it on? Not on things of the earth. Earthly, sensual, devilish, fleshly. All of that is fleshly. And because it is fleshly, Idolatry, you know, those of you who are atheists, you say you don't believe in a God. You do believe in a God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Look in the mirror, Jack. That's the God that you believe in yourself. And because you are your own God, fornication, sex outside of marriage, uncleanness, inordinate affection, oh, lusting after a married woman or a married man, or less lusting after sodomy or going for things uh, beyond that going for things that are too good for you <laughs> that are too high for you setting your eyes loftily because you got nitwits like Tony Robbins and his pupils telling you that if you know with his neuro linguistic programming that you can get anything by manipulation okay these are all fleshly if you're not saved, for which things sake the wrath of God, the wrath of God, cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walk some time, ye walk some time, he's referring on to saved people, with, when ye lived in them. So this means, if you are saved, you are no longer a, children, a child of disobedience. You're lost, 
You're a child of disobedience. You hear the true gospel, you reject it, guess what, buddy? You're a child of disobedience. Okay? And it's not this God loves you and God's not going to judge you. No, God is going to judge you. God is going to judge you. Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. See, the Christians and the easy believism devils who are Christians, okay, um, they got a, God's judgment is coming upon the wicked. Okay, God's judgment. And a lot of these, all, all the Christians have a real big problem with judgment. See, we're supposed to judge ourselves according to the scriptures. We are to examine ourselves every day according to the scriptures and judge ourselves through the scriptures. Have God judge us through the scriptures, okay? Self-examination. We need to do that every day, okay? But see, the Christians will say things to Don't judge people's fruits. Don't judge me. Not supposed to judge anybody. How are you supposed to know what good and evil is? By your feelings. By a Jesuit priest telling you what good and evil is, right? People. People. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 6. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Now, that's talking about, number one, hypocritical judgment, but in context that is referring on to those who are lost. Okay? You as a lost person thinking you're high and mighty by your ethics and your morals, judging people the, uh, and you do the same thing? Oh, you might not do what they do, but you're not a bad person, right? Pride. See, that's why brokenness so of your self-righteousness is a requirement for our Lord to save you. You can't go like these easy, easy believism devils who are too good to call upon the name of the Lord <laughs> because they save themselves. See, that's pride. That's pride. Pride, dear friend. Pride. Pride. So, which is something I battle with, war with, every single day. And I was given a heart problem to help. <laughs> okay? But let's continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which do, which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgeth them, judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Where despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? What is the repentance? It's not, see, these easy believism devils will say it's going from unbelief to belief. Something in here. Okay? When brokenness is you being broken of your self righteousness, that's beyond your head, that's in your heart. Okay? That's in your heart. Your heart needs to be broken. And these people who tell you just believe, go up another way, they're thieves and robbers, their heart hasn't been broken. Okay. Remember, they're Christians. Okay. But after thy hardness and impentient, not willing to kneel, not willing to bow or submit, impentient heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. Yeah. Yeah. God will render to everyone according to his deeds. Absolutely he will. God is a God of judgment. Okay? Now, here's some verses that these Christians really struggle with. Some of you might have heard the term red word Christians. What does that mean? Red word Christians are the ones who only focus on the gospel accounts. And it's, it's, it's Catholic. Uh, what's really scary about that is a majority of the red words 
uh, that you will read if your scriptures have red words. Mine does only in the gospel accounts because um, that's at Cambridge. But um, the red word Christians, that's a lot of the words that they focus on are before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. These are the same Christians that tell you the gospel is John 3.16 and that the sermon... <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny I, I'm sorry <laughs> these are the same people that will tell you that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for you today that's what Catholics tell you the Catholics also tell you that you need to keep the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments were there to show you that you can't save yourself that you're not good and at your best state you can never um, adhere to God's perfect requirements perfectly okay God has got a judgment. But see, these red word Christians, they just focus in on the red words in the New Testament before the death, burial, and resurrection. Um, there are some red words, and I have, I have experienced this. I have seen this. It makes them go, well, well, yeah, yeah. I've, I've <laughs> Here are some things that these red word Christians, you know, the ones that go into the build, uh, from the buildings, you know, a lot of these uh, guys who use Bibles, not scriptures, I won't even, won't even get started on that. There are many Bibles. Aren't they? You lost people know that, don't you? There's only one scripture. You ask me, what Bible do you use? I don't. What do you mean? I read the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. You ask me, is there a perfect... Bible? It's like, no! The scriptures are perfect. The scriptures. The King James Version. Right here. This is perfect. This is God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God for English people. You take this and translate this as your base text into other tongues, okay? This is the perfect standard. This is what God has said. The Bibles come to you from Rome. You see? But here are some um, here are some red words that these Christians just really don't like. Revelation Revelation chapter two, verses four and on to verse six. Speaking unto the church of the of Ephesus. Church, by the way, is a collection of people, not buildings. That also comes from uh, Catholicism, okay? See, people, Catholicism is your enemy. Catholicism is your enemy. That's Mystery Babylon, Revelation chapter 17. And her army is the Jesuit order. Uh, that's Satan's church and Satan's army, okay? But, okay, this is, if you have a scripture, now see, this is a Cambridge, see, what I'm going to be reading you doesn't have red words, okay? But most of them do have red words. I personally don't like the red words, meaning red word text. I prefer dark black text, okay? But anyway, yeah, the text, you idiots. Beg your pardon, all you lost people. I'm talking to the devils. I don't like uh, red letter editions, okay? I like black plain text editions, you idiots, okay? Talking to certain devils out there who like to chop up things and use them against people. But here's red words. If you have a copy of the scriptures that has red words here, here are some red words that these Christians don't like. Him speaking unto the church of Ephesus, verses 4 under verse 6. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. This is Jesus talking, who is God our Father. Okay? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest. The deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I, are you looking at that? 
also hate. Jesus hates something. Oh, but see, these Christians who tell you God loves you, Jesus doesn't hate anything. But here, <laughs> I've seen this. Okay, I've encountered this personally. It's like, uh, what do you do with that? Uh, uh, well, well, we got, well, got blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. I also go now to in the same chapter, Revelation chapter two, verses thirteen on to verse sixteen. Him speaking unto the church of Pergamos, a body of people, not a building. Okay. The seven churches, the seven uh, collection of peoples, not buildings, um, can be likened for our instruction in righteousness today as seven types of people as well. Uh, seven periods, yes, but seven types of people as well. Okay? So, under the church of Pergamos, verses 13 on to verse 16. I know that works. And where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in the days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. And Satan dwelleth right now in the church buildings and amongst the Christians. Because the Jesuit order by 1984 infiltrated all the churches. All of them. They, he can't really infiltrate the authorized version of the scriptures movement. Uh, he, he can get his people in for a while, but sooner or later, they always <clears throat> shoot themselves in the foot. And their true colors get shown. Okay? Every single time without fail. Some of that, too, really hurts when it's people who you have loved. That really hurts, but it happens. It happens. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat sac eat things sacrificed, sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication through the women of Moab. You know, you, you see these things about women preachers and women teachers. Um, you read uh, the book of 1 Timothy. Uh, women are not supposed to be preachers or teachers. Thus saith the Lord. Okay? Not that's what Paul wrote. See, that's another defense of the Christians. That's what Paul wrote. My own father, my fleshly father, is one of these Christians who I believe is a lost man. I really do. Um, he, had, he had the nerve to say that unto me once when I told them about, told them it's like, well, I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority above a man. And he said to me, that's what Paul said. Needless to say, from there, our relationship kind of took a nosedive. And he says of me, I'm the one that needs to get my comfort, my compass refigured. I don't think so. Anyway, verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing... I hate. Repent, or else I will come on to thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Sword of his mouth. The word of God given by inspiration, the scriptures, not a Bible. Okay? And also, verses 19 on to verse 23. In Revelation chapter 2. Thyatria. The church of Thyatria. He's now addressing. I know thy works. And charity. And service. And faith. And thy patience. And thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman. Jezebel. Jezebel. A perfect type of the Roman Catholic Church which calleth herself a prophetess. And Jezebel also is a very perfect type of the modern feminazi. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Hmm. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication 
and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Jesus Christ is our judge. Because, why? Because he is God the Father. And, here, and here's something that I've, I have personally seen that they just, I've seen it. They shut off and it's like, okay, I got, they get away from it. Sweet, non-judging, lovey-dovey, get up in the heaven, high five, bro hug, nonsense. Here's one, here, you, these red word Christians, people, Verse 23. I will kill her children with death. Oh. Jesus is going to kill somebody. So let's see. Jesus hates things and he also will kill people? Oh. oh. And I, if you, brethren, if you've ever encountered these red word Christians, when you come to this, you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't know who this is. Because the Jesus that they're pushing on to you lost people is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? The Antichrist does not appear in the scriptures, by the way. Okay? Let's read this whole verse. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Jesus is a judge. Jesus is the judge. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is God. He is our Father. One God, Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Soul, God the Father, Body, the Word made flesh. One God who is our God and judge. That verse right there, I've seen it with my own eyes. The Christians hate that. Oh, Whoa, whoa, the Christians hate that. Esau have I loved, or uh, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Why do we go through all this? Well, to show you people that the Jesus that you are being told or preached about or to whatever from these Christians is not the Jesus of the authorized version of the scriptures. You are getting, pre you are being preached the son of perdition, that man of sin, who will one day after we are gone appear in the rebuilt third temple and declare himself to be Jesus. And he's going to look just like the Roman Catholic Jesus. You watch. Okay? God is a God of judgment. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. Okay? One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Jesus is our judge. He's going to judge you. And what does that verse say? I will give unto everyone, every one of you according to your works. If you aren't saved, you come to him on his terms, broken and contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. You go up another way, guess what? You're not saved. God's wrath is for you, especially if you reject him. Now, let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 6. I was talking about this with my wife before I uh, started this video, about how these Christians, John 3.16, you to death. Um, in John 3.16 through 21, there's no mention of blood atonement. There's no death, burial, and resurrection. It's not the gospel. Ezekiel chapter 6, verses 11 on to verse 14. We went through that so you people could see and know that the God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jesus, the one who, the one that we're about to read of here in the Old Testament, is the one who was speaking in Revelation, who was the Lamb, came to uh, pay for your sins in the uh, 
gospel accounts before the death, burial, and res resurrection, which was still doctrinally in the Old Testament, one and the same. Okay? You're being lied to by these Christians and easy believers and devil's people. And the famine that is coming and all this stuff is God's judgment unto the world, unto you who reject him. Ezekiel chapter 6, verses 11 on to verse 14. Thus saith the Lord God, Smite with thine hand, and stamp with thy foot, and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel. Now see, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is written specifically unto Israel. But for instruction in righteousness, something that you and I can learn today on what not to do, okay? That God is a God of judgment, okay? For they shall come, for they shall fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Sword. A poniard is a little dagger. The steel of the Jesuits. Poniard. Okay? Famine. <laughs> Catholic orchestrated famine and pestilence because of famine. Malnutrition. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword. Steel of the Jesuit poniard. And he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. Look at that verse. Those that are far off shall die of the pestilence. And he that is near, near to this world, shall fall by the sword, the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? And he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by famine. Meaning those who will not t submit to the steel of the Jesuit poniard or this Jesuitical government. Green zones, they call them. Concentration camps they want to lock us up in. To rot away and die. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord when their slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars upon every high hill in all the tops of the mountains and under every green tree and under every thick oak the place where they did offer sweet savor to all their idols so will I stretch out my hand upon them and make the land desolate yea more desolate than the wilderness toward the bluff in all their habitations and they shall know that I am the Lord. This is God's judgment. God is allowing these things to happen unto us people. He's allowing it to happen unto you for judgment. Why? Because you have rejected him. Because you have rejected him. Ezekiel chapter 7 now. Verses 1 on to verse 19. Please follow me along. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel. An end. The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee. And will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense with an S, verb, recompense with a C is a noun, upon thee all thine abominations. Now we just saw in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, said virtually the same thing. But yet these Christians are telling you lost people, God loves you. And then you lost people, rightly so. Okay, if God loves me unconditionally, why is he sending me to hell? It's not an illogical question, especially when people are being fed the ecumenical nonsense of God loves you. That's Jesuit to bring everybody under the headship of Rome, people. Okay? That's Jesuit. 
<laughs> All right? I don't blame you, lost people, for asking that. I, I, never, I don't get upset. I get upset at the Christians who are Catholics. Remember, Catholics are Christians. I'm not a Christian. I'm of the Church of the Living God, or Church of God, if you will. Let's continue. Now is the end come upon thee, verse 3, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. We read virtually the same thing in Revelation from that sweet old Jesus who loves everybody unconditionally and doesn't judge anybody. They're lying to you people. Thus saith the Lord God, an evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense, with an S, verb. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. See, eventually you lost people are going to figure it out that, wow, this is from the hand of God. Like the magicians in Egypt who mimicked certain miracles of the Lord only to a point, to only come to a point with the lice, okay, um, where they came to the point, it's like, whoa, okay, this is, dude, this is the hand of God. This is from God. You lost people, you're going to reach that. You are going to reach that point. Unfortunately, it will be for you when it is too late. You need to get saved now. Okay. Verse 7. The morning has come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time has come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. Look at America with the ab abortion and all the sin that's gone. Look at Australia. And mine eye shall not pity, um, and mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. See, that's what needs to be broken in you in order for the Lord to save you. And these devil, easy believism heretics, they revel in their pride. They, they, they preach against calling upon the name of the Lord. They say it's for the Jews, it's a work. No. It's the result of having the fear of the Lord. You're going to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. They're against that because they're not saved themselves. You're not saved. They are in their pride. Pride hath budded. Why? Because they save themselves by their belief. And you need to be broken of your pride. Doesn't mean that you're not going to still struggle with it once the Lord saves you. Hello, hi. I struggle. Paul, the apostle, the greatest of the church of the living God, his biggest sin and struggle was pride. He was also given a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble, like I have been. Okay? So, let's continue. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Look at America. I rest my case. Look at, look at Australia. Okay? 
None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, everybody, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. Dear friends, those of you who are lost, who rightly have eyes to see, whoa, we need to fight this. We need to fight for our American freedoms. We don't have freedom. The Trading with the Enemy Act. Okay? We are under, uh, what is it, executive powers. Uh, what was it, Johnson or Roosevelt? I can't remember offhand. The trading of the uh, with the enemy act when they instituted that our you know our constitution there is guidelines they can be circumvented due to crisis which was never rescinded oh obama he talked about it but never did it okay the trading of the enemy act the uh, executive orders were never have never been rescinded that's why you see the gold fringe on the American flags and stuff like that because we're in a state of emergency we're in a hierarchical government fashioned after the Roman Catholic hierarchy after the Roman Catholic Church because America is a Jesuit nation dear friend you're fighting for our rights in here in America, but they can be circumvented just like that. Look at what uh, uh, Kamala Harris has done through Smoking Joe. And Smoking Joe is eventually going to take the fall for it, whether he make it the full four years or they get rid of him so they can put Kamala Harris in. And once Kamala Harris is officially our president, she already is. Wow. 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 See, you trying to fight this tyranny outside of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be successful. Yeah, you might have a lot of views. And yes, your content is really good. But, dear friends, those of you, you truthers, uh, you need to, number one, rightly, <laughs> oh, rightly finger who the enemy truly is, Satan, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit Order, and you need to be saved because you're fighting in vain. Your strength is your own self. You don't have the Lord in you to strengthen you to fight. That's why that says here, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. All your righteous indignation outside of Christ is nothing. It's vanity. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. And I gotta, I gotta confess. I gotta confess. Um, some of these people who are not saved and speak out against the poison crown, look that up in Latin. You'll know what I'm saying. Remember, this is going on YouTube. Okay. So, um, yeah, some of these people who speak out against the poison crown and aren't saved put a lot of do put a lot of the Church of the Living God to shame. Especially these Christians. These Christians don't count. These Christians too, don't count. They're too busy fighting against the Church of the Living God. Hmm. You easy believers and devils. Why aren't you speaking out against what's going on? <laughs> uh, because you work for the Vatican yourself. You scum. Verse 14. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Verse 14 explains that even better. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die by the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. There's your future for today, people. 
You need to get saved. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. See, a lot of these economists keeps telling you people, gold and silver, gold and silver, gold and silver. Uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver will not mean anything. Why? Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, will, needs to have everyone take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that you can't buy or sell without it. Today, no jab, no job. <laughs> uh, you can't eat, right? Gold and silver is going to mean nothing during the time of Jacob's trouble, people. That's the time of Jacob's trouble. You've heard of it. It's wrongly, erroneously referred to as the Great Tribulation. Okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because it's for the Jews. But see, those of you who get left behind uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, there's a great multitude that gets saved and then butchered right away by that man of sin, the son of perdition, because they figured it out. Hopefully, those of you who get left behind who figure it out that we have been telling you the truth, those of us of the Church of the Living God, hopefully you are the ones who will get saved right away and then, you know, son of perdition, the son of perdition is going to kill you. But you'll get saved. Also, I truly believe a lot of these people that you wicked, easy believism heretics have duped when they get left behind will turn on you guys and realize that you lied to them. You guys, most of all, you're going to get what's coming to you. For, uh, let's continue in verse 19. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of in the day of the wrath of the Lord, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. See, once we get caught up you know, redeemed, resurrection, wrongly referred to, inaccurately, re erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay? Rapture doesn't appear in the scriptures. Why are you still using that term? Let's see, once we get caught up, there is hope for you. But it's going to cost you everything. See, you don't want to pay the price of brokenness and contrition and fear the Lord now after we get caught up it's going to cost you your life what you value more than anything that see the Lord doesn't you the Lord doesn't save you now we get redeemed caught up and you're left behind your best bet is in the early parts of the time of Jacob's trouble Revelation chapter 17 read it in the authorized version of scriptures Great multitude gets saved, then killed. Hopefully that will be you once you realize that these easy believism devils have lied to you and that these Christians who are making you, want you to go along with this system, that they lied to you. Hopefully you guys will get saved. And you're not going to have to endure that long because right in that beginning stage, God's judgment is coming. See, but he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. God's wrath cannot be poured out on this earth while we, the church of the living God, are here. Once we get redeemed, caught up, then God's wrath is coming. Okay? God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation, to be caught up. You can escape this time, dear friend. No. no. Most of you don't. You're too proud. And because of the Christians who tell you God loves you, and then you have sense enough, brains in your head to say, like, okay, if God loves me unconditionally, why, why, then, why then is he going to send me to hell? I just got to believe, but yet God loves me unconditionally. I got to believe, but yet he's, he's a God who's going to send people to hell. It doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. 
We've got to remember, God is a God of wrath as he gets angry. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of love. Yes, he loved you and gave his only begotten son on the cross. He shed his blood for your sins. Died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You need to go to the cross, broken of your self-righteousness. Contrite, godly sorrow. It's your fault that he died. And the fear of the Lord that he's going to send you to hell justly. You're going to call on his name. Again, those who dispute that, they ain't saved. Go to Deuteronomy. We're still, we still got something to look at. Yes, I know. But i got to show you people, okay? <laughs> These Christians, people. Look, I I'm badgering you about this, yes. <laughs> look, I, I don't care if you want to cling to 1 Peter chapter 4 as if it were done on your shoe. I don't care. We never refer to ourselves as that. Peter said it tongue-in-cheek. It's better to die as a Christian than to be a murderer, thief, evildoer, or busybody. That's what he was comparing it onto. That's what the lost world labeled us as. We need to get that term out of our vocabulary. I don't care if over centuries they've used it. I don't care. Look out now. You lost people when you think Christian? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 35 on the verse 42. 35 on the verse 42. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God, our Father, Jesus Christ, spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead. Godhead, not Trinity. Trinity is satanic. It does not appear in the scripture. The Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 35 on the verse 42. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste, coming fast. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left, talking about during the time of Jacob's trouble. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. I believe that's referring on to the Eucharist and the cup of wine that the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests tell you with their abracadabra transubstantiation that they turn the wafer into the flesh of Jesus. That's why you love the flesh so much. And the wine abracadabra into the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Look at that. Where are their gods? Their little our rock in whom they trusted. And Catholics say that Peter is the rock <laughs> that the church is founded on. Um, Patras, Petros, uh, stone, little stone, sand. Okay, S sand is made of little stones. Okay, rock, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and they shall say, Where are their gods, little g, and their rock, little r, in whom they trusted? Where is that? Where is your Mary, you Catholics? Huh? Huh? The time's going to be coming. Where is your Mary? It's Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven. Uh, Diana of the Ephesians. Okay, Semiramis. Okay? Uh, where is your pita? Hmm? Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, the little wafer cookie, okay? And drank the wine of their drink offerings, the cup, okay? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Look at verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges, you shall know them by their fruits. Look at that verse. Their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital R. That's referring now to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Even our enemies themselves being judges. 
What does that mean? You shall know them by their fruits. Dude, somebody preaching to you, just believe, is not a saved man. <laughs> not a saved woman. A woman, I'm not even going to go there. But you just believe, just believe. They're not saved. They're Christians. They're not of the church of the living God. Okay? Yes, God has a requirement. Brokenness and contrition and the fear of the Lord. It's, it's not that difficult. Get know who yourself is. Let's continue this. See now I, verse 39, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I whet, on a sharpening stone, if I whet my, my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will, I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. You're not saved. You're the Lord's enemy. It's that simple. God's love is at Calvary. Go to him broken, contrite. And in fear of the Lord, you will call upon his name. And may he save you. But you're not saved. You reject the true gospel. Just believe is not the true gospel. You reject the true gospel. You're an enemy of God. See, as you, as you lost people have realized, this God loves you thing makes no sense. Hell, right? Unconditionally. But what about hell? You mean I, 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 can't, I can't be... Do, I got to be a new creature? Or see, the easy believism devil tells you, no, you don't have to be. That's a work. Okay? That's because they're not new creatures themselves. But see... They, they have a thing against exchanged life. Uh, they These easy believism people, they do have a changed life. They're not new creatures, though. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Look at the alcoholic who uh, quits alcohol by their own power. They have a changed life. But they're not new creatures. See what I'm saying? All this is coming upon you because of judgment. Go to 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. Take your pardon. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. Verses 35 on verse 40. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, God executing judgment and withholding rain from people. If they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, wheresoever, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man, or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. Yeah, he does know your heart. And he, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. We'll look at that personally here. Um, what God says of your heart. And that carries over all dispensational lines. Verse 40. That they may fear 
v all the days that live all the days that they live in the land which thou gave us unto our fathers see but the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding job 28 28 these christians how are you supposed to love someone that you're afraid of see that's that's a symptom of this satanic ecumenical jesuitical god loves you stuff they just believe stuff fear the lord you know that he's going to send you to hell because it's your fault that he died for you and you're rejecting him okay it's your fault uh you need to be broken of your self-righteousness fear of the lord will come upon you he'll scare the hell out of you and when he scares the hell out of you lord please forgive me i repent i'm a sinner please save me okay okay just so happens that these christians these easy believism people they have a big problem with that fear the lord because they, they're not they're not saved they're not saved anyone preaches against brokenness of self-righteousness godly sorrow contrition for your sin for your fault that you did to him because he died for you it's your fault and preach against calling upon the name of the Lord brought upon by fear of the Lord and especially they got a big problem with being a new creature people people listen to me listen look at me they're lost they're not saved they're devils working for the Vatican probably all of them just I believe uh, just what's themselves okay please wake up wake up God is a God of judgment and what's happening right now this ain't even his wrath boy because we're here okay God knows everybody's hearts yes he does yes he certainly does yes he certainly does uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 really quick Jeremiah chapter 17 Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 here's what God thinks of your heart see a perfect heart a heart that belongs to God is a broken and contrite heart okay a heart that fears him these devils these Christians they don't fear God but here's what God thinks of your heart the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it see and what are these what do these Christians tell you they, they want you to go off of your feelings they want you to put away the book to not be bound to a paper book right they're all about feelings experiencing God Verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You're going to reap what you sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God is a God of judgment. This is what's going on today. The psychological operation, the poison crown psychological operation instituted and being carried out by the Jesuit order the famine that's coming this fictitious um, poison crown okay it's judgment Kamala Harris is judgment to America okay people okay go to second Chronicles chapter 20 second Chronicles chapter 20 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 5 on to verse 13. Not 1 Chronicles, excuse me. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 5 on to verse 13. Jehoshaphat, a godly king, who had his issues. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and, Jer and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, before the new court and said O Lord God of, of, our, of our fathers art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee art not thou our God 
who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, pestilence, or pestilence, or famine, sword, steel of the Jesuit poniard, pestilence, people getting sick by receiving the steel of the Jesuit poniard, and famine, a produced famine, not one uh, natural like withholding rain, even though it's been a dry summer for us up here this year. But they, the Jesuits, are producing this famine. Have you not noticed in your grocery stores? Okay. We stand before this house and in thy presence. For thy name is in this house. And cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab. And Mount Seir. Uh, Ammon and Moab. Are the children. Are related unto Abraham. Uh, the children of Lot. Lot. Those children born in the uh, incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters. And Seir, Mount Seir, Esau, Edom, the brother of Jacob. Esau, uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Okay. Whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great co company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And see, you lost people who are doing good to fight all this. Your eyes aren't upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You're working, you're fighting in vain. Judgment is going to come, yes. But if you don't have Christ Jesus, you have nothing. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children, everybody. Could that happen today? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. See, you have some of these Christians who will tell you that a big revival is coming. Dude, that's a lie. That's a lie. A revival is not coming. A revival is not coming. A revival during the time of Jacob's trouble, they will revive, yes, but it's not going to be a world. The latter reign, by the way, is the fulfillment of the Jew after the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, uh, the Jews will finally get it in the time of Jacob's trouble. If you want to call that a revival, I guess you could. But uh, there is no revival coming. Can America change? No. See, another verse that uh, these Christians like to go to in Second Chronicles chapter 7, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 on to verse 22. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Second Chron Chronicles chapter seven, verse twelve on to verse twenty-two. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If My people which are called by my name, and we Americans are not called by his name. This is instruction and in righteousness. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Oh, like the abortion, sodomite marriages, the pushing of the uh, steel of the Jesuit poniard, the poison crown <laughs> psychological operation. Okay? And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. See, verse 14, a lot of Christians like to point to that, that there is hope for America. There ain't no hope for America, people. 
Because America in a whole cannot do verse 14. And when they bring uh, President Trump back as part of the Napoleon plan, dude, you need to get saved. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, talking to King Solomon, pay attention to this. If, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have com covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Do it the Lord's way, things will be good. Is America doing that? Can America do that? Absolutely not. America's gone, people. You have to accept that. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight. And I will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. You know, you look at a dollar bill, by the way. It has the eye of Horus, and the, the symbol of the uh, Masons. Okay? Star of Remphan. Unfortunately, the Jews think that's the, uh, the Star of David. It's the Seal of Solomon. It's Masonic. America, uh, our founding fathers were Freemasons. Freemasons are controlled and run by the Jesuits. God did have something to do with establishing America. Yes, he did. But you got to remember... Today, especially, America is a nation against God, and Kamala Harris is our judgment. You need to get saved because if what's 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 coming without Christ, you ain't got a leg to stand on, pal. You're building your house upon a sand, uh, a foundation of sand, not a foundation of rock. Now, let's get to this article, okay? Now I. Got a, I got my other laptop here. Going to check this out. The uh, PDF for this will be in the description box. There is a famine coming. A orchestrated, produced famine by the Jesuit order. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this to you. It's five pages. Okay? I'm going to read this whole thing to you. Pay attention, and I'm putting the link, link in the description. Okay? Verbatim. The following information is being provided by the Federal Bureau of Investigation with no guarantees or warranties for potential use at the sole discretion of recipients to protect against cyber threats. It's a great possibility that the Jesuits are going to do something to the Internet. Absolutely. 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 This data is provided to help cybersecurity professionals and system administrators guard against the persistent malicious actions of cyber actors. This PIN was coordinated with DHS CISA. Okay. You'll see the, we'll get to the actual article. Okay. Cyber criminal actors targeting the food and agriculture sector with ransomware attacks. See, this is their scapegoat. 
The Jesuits are the ones who are producing the famine, withholding the food, uh, storing them in granaries. I talk about this in the um, at Famine's Doorstep video, which is going to be in the description box of this video, where we go about that. How Satan is um, counterfeiting what Joseph did. Okay, won't get into it. Summary. Ransomware attacks. What is a ransomware? Um, for example, your fancy schmancy cell phone, uh, a virus will get in that and hold your ca uh, phone ransom until you pay a fee. Okay? Ransomware attacks targeting the food and agriculture se sector disrupt operations, cause financial loss, and negatively impact the food supply chain which is their ultimate goal. The Jesuits want to bring that about to make people starving, scared, and angry. Okay? So they can bring about martial law when we start killing each other. Okay. Ransomware may impact businesses across the sector. From the sector, from small farms to large producers, processors and manufacturers, and markets and restaurants. Cyber criminal threat actors exploit network vulnerabilities to exfiltrate ex data and encrypt systems in a sector that is increasingly reliant on smart technologies, industrial control systems, and internet-based automation systems. They're eventually going to crash the internet, brethren. Let's see. This is their scapegoat. They, they, uh, uh, what is that? Agenda 2030. Okay? They, they need to bring this um, famine about. Here's their scapegoat. Food and agricultural business and agriculture business victimized by ransomware suffer significant financial loss resulting from ransom payments, loss of productivity, and reden and Remediation costs. Companies may also experience the loss of pro proprietary information and personally in identifiable information, PII, and may suffer re re reputational damage resulting from ransomware attack. The print on this is very small, and if I wear my glasses, it messes me up. I'll try it with my glasses. Ah, there we go. Okay. Threat overview. The food and agriculture sector is among the critical infrastructure sectors increasingly targeted by cyber attacks by Jesuits. As the sector moves to adopt more smart technologies and Internet of Things, processes the attack, processes the attack surface increases. Larger businesses are targeted based on their perceived ability to pay higher ransom demands, while smaller entities may be seen as soft targets, particularly those in the earlier stages of digitizing their processes, according to a private industry report. In a ransomware attack, victims' files are encrypted and made unavailable, and the attacker demands a payment for the, de the, for the decryption tool and key. As of 2019, sensitive data files are commonly exfiltrated prior to encryption, and the attacker demands a payment not to publish the sensitive data on a name and shame website. This double extortion potentially gives the attacker more leverage to ensure payment based on the potential damage caused by a significant data breach of sensitive information. Threat actors may apply additional coercive tactics such as convincing media organizations to write stories on victims on victim security ident uh, incidents. Excuse me. Harassing employees by phone, notifying business partners of data theft and conducing and conducting distributed denial of service attacks to further disrupt operations. According to a private industry report, cyber actors may gradually broaden 
their attack from just information technology and business processes to also include the operational technology assets which monitor and control physical processes impacting industrial production regardless of whether the malware was deployed in IT or OT systems. That's Jesuit. And the tactics that they are describing are things that Jesuits do to destroy men of God. Okay? Destroy their reputation. Isolating. You know, get them to turn on their own brethren. And also death by various means. If they won't be broken, there are many others. But if they don't be broken uh, by the Jesuits and go uh, play their game, they'll do these kinds of things. This is all Jesuit. You need to know who the true enemy is. It's Rome. It's Satan through the Roman Catholic Church, through the army of the Jesuits. You need to be aware of that. Let's continue. The impact of ransomware attacks continues to grow. From 2019 to 2020, the average ransom demand doubled and the average cyber insurance payout increased from 65% to tw from 2019 to 2020. The highest observed ransom demand in 2020 was 23 million United States dollars, according to a private industry report. According to the 2020 IC3 report, IC3 received 2,474 complaints identified as ransomware with adjusted losses of over 29.1 million across all sectors. Separate studies have shown 50 to 80 percent of victims that paid the ransom experienced a repeat ransomware attack by either the same or different actors, of course, because they got away with it. Although cyber criminals use a variety of techniques to infect victims with ransomware, the most common means of infection are email phishing campaigns, remote desktop protocols, vulnerabilities and software vulnerabilities. That's why you got to be really careful with the emails. Example of ransomware attacks impacting food and agriculture sector businesses include the following. In July 2021, a U.S. bakery company lost access to their server, files and applications, halting their production, shipping and receiving as a result of Okay, sodden Kobe re evil ransomware. You download this link, <laughs> you'll see. Sodden Okibi R evil ransomware. Kind of looks like Sodom Sodomy Okidoki R evil <laughs> ransomware, which was deployed through software used by an IT support managed service provider. MSP. The bakery company was shut down for approximately one week, delaying customer orders and damaging the company's reputation. One of the things that the Jesuits can do is um, get into your bank account and trip you up. You. The Lord rebuke you and the Lord rebuke you hard that's what you decide to do. You know to whom I'm addressing. You scoundrel. If you do that, the Lord rebuke you. You will definitely prove that you are a lost devil infiltrator if that happens. You know who I'm talking about. You know who that's addressed to. In May 2021, Cyber actors using a variant of the Sodin OKBR evil ransomware compromised computer networks in the U.S. and overseas locations of a global meat processing company, which resulted in the possible exfiltration of company data and the shutdown of some U.S. based plants. For several days, the temporary shutdown reduced the number of cattle and hogs slaughtered causing a shortage in the U.S. meat supply and driving wholesale meat prices up as much as 25% according to open source reports. 
In March 2021, a U.S. beverage company suffered a ransomware attack that caused significant, significant disruption to its business operations, including its operations, production, and shipping. The company took its systems offline to prevent the further spread of malware, directly impacting employees who were unable to access specific systems, according to an open source report. According to open source reports. In January 2021, a ransomware attack against an identified U.S. farm resulted in losses of approximately $9 million due to the temporary shutdown of their farming operations. The unidentified threat actor was able to target their internal servers by gaining administrator level access through compromised credentials. November, now this is, this is weird. Okay, and that was in January 2021. In November 2020, a US-based international food and agriculture business reported it was unable to ac access multiple computer systems tied to their network due to a ransomware attack conducted by 1% group threats at conducted by 1% group threat actors using a phishing email with a malicious zip file attachment the cyber criminals downloaded several taber taber bytes of data through their identified cloud service provider prior to the encryption of hundreds of folders. The company's administrative systems were impacted. The company did not pay the 40 million ransom and was able to successfully restore their system from backups, okay? Recommended mitigations. This is what they're going to use as an excuse to shut down the food industry. And there are people in these industries that don't know. Remember, the structure is a pyramid, see, a pyramid structure. It falls down from the top, okay, and everything goes up to the top, okay, okay. Remember the dollar bill, the American dollar bill with the eye of Horus on it, okay. But there are those people within these uh, corporations and businesses who don't know anything about this. See, it's a facade, it's a sham. For the those who are in the know and those who are not, the exoteric and esoteric doctrine, one prepared for those who are in the know and one who are not, okay? Recommended mitigations. Cyber criminal threat actors will continue to exploit network system vulnerabilities within the food and agriculture sector. The following steps can be implemented to mitigate the threat and protect against ransomware attacks. What do they tell us to do? Regularly backup data, air gap, and password protect backup copy file online, offline. And password protect backup copies offline. Ensure copies of critical data are not accessible for modification or deletion from the system where the data resides. Implement network segmentation. Implement a recovery plan to maintain and retain multiple copies of sensitive or proprietary data and servers in a physically separate, segmented, secure location, i.e. hard drive, storage device, the cloud. Install updates, patch operating systems, software and firm, firmware as soon as they are released. Use multi-factor authentication with strong passphrases where possible. Use strong passwords and regularly change passwords to network systems and accounts. Implementing the shortest acceptable time frame for password change. Avoid reusing passwords for multiple accounts. Disable unused remote access RPD reports or RDP ports and monitor remote, remote access RDP logs. <coughs> Require administrator credentials to install software. Audit user accounts with administrative privileges and configure access controls 
with least privilege in mind. Ah, get a load of that one. Those who have freedoms, take away their freedoms. An example, YouTube with censorship, right? You're able to speak freely to a point, but renege that for everyone else's safety? Sound familiar? Let's continue. Install a regularly update, a regularly update antivirus and anti-malware software on all hosts. And I've learned that through those things, these guys can also pass off these viruses and stuff. Um, only use secure networks and avoid using public Wi-Fi networks. Consider installing and using a VPN. Consider adding an email banner to messages coming from outside your organizations. Disable hyper, hyper links in receiving emails. Focus on cybersecurity awareness and training. Regularly provide users with training on information security principles and techniques, as well as overall emerging cybersecurity risks and vulnerabilities, i.e. ransomware and phishing scams. Okay. All right, and it says here for additional information on ransomware, see also, and it gives a bunch of links. Okay. Uh, these links, things, I'm not going to read you. You can you can look at these yourself, because I'll have it on the in the description. The FBI is seeking information requested. The FBI is seeking any information that can be shared to include boundary logs showing communication to and from foreign IP addresses, Bitcoin wallet information, the decryptor file, and or a benign sample of an encrypted file. The FBI does not encourage paying ransoms. Payment does not guarantee files will be recovered. It may also embolden adversaries to target additional organizations. Encourage other criminal actors to engage in the distribution of ransomware and or fund illicit, activity, illicit activities. However, the FBI understands that when victims are faced with an inability to function, all operations are evaluated to protect shareholders, employees, and customers, regardless of whether you or your organization have decided to pay the ransom. The FBI urges you to promptly report ransomware incidents to your local field office or the FBI's 24-7 cyber watch. Sci watch. Doing so provides the FBI with critical information needed to prevent future attacks by identifying and tra tracking ransomware attackers and holding them accountable under U.S. Jesuit law. And let's see, what else does it give here? Okay. Uh, the FBI uh, reporting notice. The FBI encourages recipients of this document to report information concerning suspicious or criminal activity either to the local FBI field office at whatever or to the FBI's 24-7 cyber watch. And it gives a number. Okay, we don't need to read that. And that's it. That's it on this, uh, this thing. Like I said, I'm going to be placing it in the description box of this video. This is how they're going to play it off. You know, like the how when things happen here in America, like, uh, for example, they like to use the lone gunman theory quite a bit. Oh, it's just a lone gunman. You know, the Oklahoma City bombing was just a lone gunman. Uh, Leo, <laughs> Lee Harvey Hall Oswald, just a lone gunman. Yeah, the lone gun. Uh, Reagan, the lone gunman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesuits. The interworking of the Jesuit order. That's what it is, dear friends. That's what's coming. And they're going, and think about it, brethren. They're going to have to crash the internet sometime in order to implement the 5G. 
They're going to have to do these things eventually. See, this is the judgment coming. And I know you've noticed in some of the grocery stores, haven't you? The lack of uh, stuff therein, haven't you? I know you have. I know you have. Let us, let us not forget. Go to the book of Amos. There are some notes that I had that I'm not sharing with you, but I think, I think you've got the point. I think you've got the point. Amos, chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 8 in Amos chapter 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of, known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That works both ways. These lost devil Christians... And these coadjutors, but those of us who are of the same mind, same spirit, same body, our Lord Jesus Christ, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? Will the lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Why? For judgment. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. prophets. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear the lion of the tribe of Judah? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? We got to read these. We, we can't skip these. Isaiah chapter 45. We can't skip these. We can't. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of judgment, people. You have to understand that. Okay? Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Verses 5. On to verse 19. Isaiah chapter 5. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee. Though thou hast not known me. You're not, you don't live unless the Lord lets you live. The reason why you're breathing lost man, lost woman, is because the Lord lets you live. Okay? That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And see, this flies into the face of God loves you. Because the God loves you ecumenical doctrine is satanic and comes from the Jesuits. No wonder you lost people. Hate the Christians. I'm not too fond of them either. I'm not a Christian. The Christians are the ones preaching to you. God loves you. Okay, It's your Christian duty to take the steel of the Jesuits upon you. My, uh. Drop down ye heavens from above. And let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Every single one of you who is lost, you're striving with your maker. I don't care if you believe in him or not. He is your God. He is your king. And you're going to give an account to him one way or another. Whether at the judgment seat of Christ, which is for us, Saved people or at the great white throne of judgment for the lost. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou? Or thy work he hath no hands? Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, 
Ask me of things concerning, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command me, command ye me. Ask him. The easy believers and devils have a really big problem with asking him because they're too proud. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens. And all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives. Not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, a prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God manifest in the flesh. Thus saith the Lord. The labor of Egypt, Egypt in type for us today, instruction and in righteousness, the world. The labor of Egypt, the labor of the world. And the merchandise of Ethiopia, Ham, okay, and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee. In chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplications unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else, and there is none else. There is no God. Um, during the kingdom of heaven, the heathen nations, uh, this is what they're going to do. They're going to come down and bow to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols, Catholics. And you evolutionists, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. The Lord, through the scriptures, he declares things that are right. Not you, not your feelings. We have a standard. We of the church of the living God, we live according to the standard. Not our feelings. He declares what is right. And Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Verses 1 on to verse 15. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Without our Lord's salvation, you have no hope. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice. Yeah, some do. Some of you lost people do. Who are fighting this? Yeah. But you're looking at the wrong type of justice. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is a God of judgment. A God of judgment. He declares things that are right. You need to seek Him. Not our Jesuit government. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity. And bring forth iniquity. Excuse me. Yeah, vanity, going to the government. They hatch cockatrice eggs. They weave a spider's web. They catch, they, he that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their web shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed innocent blood. 
Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. See, without the Lord, you trying to fight all this, you trying to make a stand without the Lord Jesus Christ, it means nothing. It means nothing. Where well, you going to go to the court system? It's controlled it's controlled by the Jesuit order, people. Come on. You need to get saved. It's coming. The way of peace, they know not. And when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have that peace that passeth all understanding. Why? Because you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within you. You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Spirit, soul, and body, one God, okay? The circumcision made without hands, our Lord living in you, okay? The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You know no judgment. Judgment of men, which is no judgment. The judgment of the scriptures. God judges you through the scriptures. And we as the church of the living God, we need to examine ourselves daily. Therefore is judgment far from us. Why? Because they're doing it themselves, not looking to the Lord. Neither doth, ju neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We, we grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in, as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears, and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, con conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth far off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. His judgment is coming, but judgment meaning no one seeking the Lord. No one is inquiring of the old past. No one wants the Lord's judgment. They want to live as their own. Hence, the instrument of a foolish shepherd, Satan, who rules this world, who is allowed to rule this world, for judgment. You've got what's coming to you. Dear friend, outside of Jesus Christ, there are many of you out there who are doing pretty good, um, you know, speaking out against what's going on. And praise the Lord, that's good. But see, you're missing a critical thing. See, you're not putting into the equation God. And why? Because of the Jesuits, because of the Christians who teach you this nonsense. God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. It's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. There will be several links in the description box of this video. I encourage you to look at them and watch them and read them. You need to consider these things because slowly, bit by bit, these things are coming to pass. And what will you do in the end thereof? See, their whole goal is to get us starving, terrified, and angry. And remember, us Americans were heavily armed. And what better way for than to create um, hunger, terror, and anger with a heavily armed populace. They're just, them Jesuits are just going to sit back and watch it all unfold. 
and then come in with the military to clean up, I bet you. Please consider these things, people, before it is too late. That's going to be it for this video. Brethren, Church of the Living God, pray for one another. Pray for the babes in Christ. Pray for your brethren and sister in Australia. Pray for the sick. Please pray for your servants. Thank you to all of you who pray for us. Thank you. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.